Tourette syndrome is a unique and complex neurological disorder, and symptoms may take many forms. Although the disorder is not well known, several thousand Australians suffer from the distress and embarrassment it causes. These people need consideration and understanding, not ridicule of their symptoms. The diagnosis of Tourette syndrome requires evidence of both motor and vocal tics, though they may occur independently at different periods. These uncontrollable movements and sounds are the most identifiable feature of the disorder. People with Tourette syndrome have an overwhelming compulsion to perform repeated, seemingly meaningless actions and produce sounds that can range from simple throat clearing to repeated words and phrases and sometimes the uttering of obscenities. Although compelled to perform these tics by a build-up of tension, the person with Tourette syndrome can, with effort, hold them in check for a short time. But the compulsion remains, and when the effort is relaxed, the pent-up pressure is released in a flurry of movements and or sounds. So can you control these movements to any extent? Yeah, I can actually. I can do it really well when I have to. Um, I remember a good example would be back in high school when I entered, uh, well, basically my parents encouraged me to get into public speaking and it's been a good skill to me, it's given me a lot of confidence. But um, I remember I used to have to get up and do like eight to ten minute speeches off by heart and I wouldn't twitch at all. I went to state competitions and I got usually second, third place. So that was a, a really good example. Um, but, you know, as you probably know, it does build up and it does, it does get worse later if, if you hold it in. You know, you become very agitated. Yeah, it puts a bit of stress in the body. Tourette syndrome was named after Dr. Georges Albert Edouard Brutus Gilles de la Tourette, a French neurologist who described the disorder in detail in 1885. A syndrome is a collection of signs and symptoms which make up a disorder. Gilles de la Tourette studied under the great Jean Martin Charcot and is seen here attending one of Charcot's demonstrations on hysteria. It was Charcot who insisted that Gilles de la Tourette attach his name to this mysterious disorder of tics in honour of his having recognised it as a separate disorder. In his 1885 paper, he included the famous case of the Marquise of Dompierre, an aristocrat who from the age of seven was troubled by involuntary movements or tics. She would at times bark like a dog or swear like a mule driver. The symptoms made her a lifelong recluse. Through history, there have been many notable persons reputed to have had Tourette syndrome, including Peter the Great, Samuel Johnson, Mozart, and Napoleon. As we have seen, tics can appear in a number of forms. Simple motor tics may include repeated blinking, twitching of the face, grimacing, nodding, lip smacking, or other brief, simple movements. Complex motor tics are more involved. They can be rituals, such as repeated touching of objects. I used to have showers for about a half hour because I had to touch yeah. all the tiles in my shower in a row. And... Walking on tiptoes, twirling the hands or body. I have to do this sort of waving it around and moving the phone around and I just can't get the phone to my ear to answer it. Or the person may imitate others or self-injure. Because I'd, I'd be cooking and he would um, have the urge to come and touch the element while I was cooking. And as a parent, you automatically say, don't do that. And he's just like, Mum, just let me do it. And he is in control. He doesn't burn himself. He just has to go. He just has to complete. He's had the thought that there's a hot element on that you're not supposed to touch. So he immediately is compelled to touch it. So you've just got to let him complete it. And then it would finish and then off he'd go. Complex motor tics are many and varied and these are but a few examples. Then there are tics which produce sounds. Simple vocal tics include repeated grunting, sniffing, barking, tongue clicking, throat clearing and other noises. <laughs> vocal tics can also be complex. Some people find themselves compelled to utter or even shout offensive words causing great embarrassment for themselves, not to mention others. I I was two years old when it started, two years old. In your native country? Yes, country. And how did it start? To tell you the truth, I can't remember. <laughs> what were you doing? What were the symptoms then? The symptoms, 
Uh, I, I started to say one word mm -hmm. that was penis in a penis. Penis, in, in, dick, dick. In, dick, in, dick, in dick, Spanish. In the Spanish. I was at, at, at the school. I, I, I was in a school. In the Catholic school? No, no, Catholic public. Oh, good. Public school, yeah. I, I was in public school and I said, Dick, Dick. And the, the principal, she told my mom to take me to see psychology. Mm -hmm. And the psychology treated me like with the rights. They knew what it was. They knew what it was. Away. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they gave me medication, mm -hmm. the psychology, you know. I saw a psychology, you know, a psychiatry, a psychology. Yes. Hey, fuck off. And the psychology said to me, this girl has genital Tourette's. This symptom, called coprolalia, occurs in only a minority, but naturally, it has attracted much attention. The words, although offensive, are not always obscene, and in some cases, are in the form of a racial slur. Tourette syndrome usually first appears in childhood, most often around the age of seven, and less commonly, in adolescence. The onset rarely, if ever, occurs beyond the age of 18. What was it in your case? Was it twitching of your mouth or...? Um, of my nose. Your nose? Yeah. <laughs> but you don't do that anymore now? No. Mm, what about Andrew? Oh, I had a lot. I had like a shake. I like, like used to shake my head like that, really, a lot, like... Um, and I used to have like a... like this, like a lip went to my nose. Um, Mum said like, like a, a blinking. Though the symptoms may trouble a person throughout life, there is often a substantial improvement after adolescence and in early adult years. In some cases, the disorder may all but disappear or resolve into two or three ticks instead of the many that had previously been seen. Tourette syndrome is a spectrum disorder, and the symptoms range from quite mild through to severe. However, the majority are in the mild to moderate category. I started flinching and everything. Everything, all the ticks come in different sorts, like. From when I was 10, I used to flinch and crack my jaw and everything, open my jaw. But basically, as I got older, every time I found something new, it would just, and I noticed that it would come up, like flicking my fingers or biting my tongue. It would just be a habit. The diagnostic confirmation of Tourette syndrome is a job for the medical specialist, who has to rule out other disorders which cause abnormal movements, such as chorea. There is, however, no test to say that one has Tourette syndrome. The diagnosis is reached after a detailed history of symptoms has been taken by a specialist such as a neurologist. To diagnose Tourette syndrome, motor and vocal tics have to have been evident for a period of at least 12 months. Tics characteristically wax and wane, and although a person may be free from them for up to three months within this time span, this will not preclude a diagnosis. A history of tics over at least a year is necessary to exclude children who develop tics which disappear after a few weeks or months, as in transient tic disorder. Over time, there are usually marked changes in the frequency of motor and vocal tics. They can go from many times a day to tic-free periods lasting up to three months. His tics come and go. There's sometimes he has periods where you won't see anything. He's just totally relaxed. He's like any other child at school, you know, behaves like any other child. And then other times where he just, he, he might display seven or eight different tics within a week. Uh, and sometimes even at the one time um, when he gets really, really stressed out. The form they take and the part of the body they involve can also change with time. Motor and vocal tics are not always displayed together and may occur at different times. Tic presentation is subject to other factors, such as anxiety, stress, or hyperexcitement, which are known to make tics worse or bring on a rush of symptoms. Tics can also appear more frequently when a person is relaxed, such as in front of TV. This may be due to release of conscious control of tics whilst occupied. Focusing one's attention, such as on an interesting task or hobby, caused the tics to subside temporarily. Um, I work as a sign language interpreter. When I use my hands for signing, I don't get distracted by tics 
with my hands, like I would with the telephone or, or with the pen. Many people with Tourette syndrome suffer from comorbid disorders such as attention deficit and or hyperactivity, obsessive compulsive disorder, learning disorders, sleep problems, depression and or anxiety. Others may suffer from learning disorders such as dyslexia or difficulty with mathematics or writing. With the frustration and social isolation that the tics bring, it's not surprising that there may be both academic and behavioural problems at school. In other cases, there are obsessive compulsive symptoms apart from the tic compulsions. These can include counting or straightening rituals, evening things up behaviour, sure obsessive thoughts and fears, compulsive again. washing, or repetitive touching. Um, I had a compulsion, so I think it's actually OCD I'm talking about, to touch the ground and then to counteract the movement of bending down and touching the ground, I had to then jump up as high as I could in the, in the air to balance that action. So I had to go down and then up again and there was a certain way I had to do it, to jump up and click my heels. Those with Tourette syndrome suffer great mental distress due to the difficulty in controlling attention-provoking movements or antisocial outbursts. The embarrassment that arises from uncontrolled behaviour can lead people with Tourette syndrome to shun social situations and become reclusive to avoid embarrassment or harassment. And, and your life now, you were telling me that, that um, you don't like to go out in public? Yeah, yes, I, 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 go, I, go, I, I like to go in Berlin. But I'm scared, I'm very scared. I'm scared to go in public. I'm scared. So you go with friends? With friends, yeah. Who friends. know what your problem is. Yeah. So where do these abnormal movements and vocalizations come from? It's a question of nerve cells of the brain, or neurons, firing off inappropriately and thereby producing the tics. But we do not yet know why this should happen. Normal brain function depends on nerve impulses generated in one neuron being passed on to the next neuron in the chain in a unique way. A natural chemical, known as a neurotransmitter, is released from the nerve endings of one neuron. It causes a brief change in the electrical charge of the next neuron. Depending on the type of neurotransmitter, this second neuron can be excited to pass on the impulse or it can be inhibited. Here is shown the action of dopamine, an excitatory neurotransmitter thought to be important in Tourette syndrome. Ultimately, the impulses arrive at the muscles, producing the tics. It is thought that overactivity of dopamine may lie at the heart of the abnormal movements. Drugs which block the action of dopamine have indeed been moderately successful in controlling symptoms, although unwanted side effects can be troublesome. One such drug is haloperidol. The effectiveness of such drugs is considered by many to be a strong support for the concept that Tourette syndrome is a physical disorder of the brain, not a psychiatric condition. The fact that Tourette syndrome is transmitted from one generation to the next also suggests that it has a physical cause, although as yet no specific abnormality has been found in the genetic makeup of those with the disorder. Tourette syndrome follows a dominant pattern of inheritance. In theory, if one parent has the disorder, there is a 50% chance that a child produced by that parent will have Tourette syndrome or an associated condition such as obsessive compulsive disorder or multiple tic disorder. In practice though, the percentage is much lower, because the gene is not always fully expressed. In such cases, the genetic abnormality is not transformed into a recognizable abnormality. It is thought that the two to three times higher incidence in males is due to more complete expression of the gene. Recognizing Tourette syndrome as early as possible is important to a person's development. It explains what otherwise seems to be bizarre antisocial behavior, which tends to alienate the person from his or her peers, especially during adolescence. When uh, Lil took the kids to Shamila, she was fantastic. And, and I think, more importantly, it, it helped the kids understand what it was. And they gave, or Shamila gave, the, the kids just the, 
things to look out for and, and things and, and techniques, yeah. how to get over it. And the um, psychologist uh, gave them skills in regaining some power. I thought I like, did it, did my tick more when I was tired. Knowing what the disorder is all about can prevent misunderstandings and help to avoid the person becoming socially isolated. Educating others about Tourette syndrome can help to overcome ignorance. Children with Tourette syndrome often experience learning difficulties with or without attention deficit and hyperactivity problems and may need special attention from teachers and special arrangements for exams. Has it changed over the, the time from the age of two when he was diagnosed? Yes, uh, the noises and the ticks have got worse but it's the associated disorders um, that are coming out more now. What associated disorders? Um, a little bit of ADHD, um, obsessive compulsive disorder, and um, he has a lot of learning difficulties coming out at school now as well. Is it that he can't concentrate on things long enough? Is that what mm. you're saying? Yes, yeah, that's right. yes. That's been our biggest battle with the education department. You know, he's had a bit of trouble at school on and off with it, and uh, a few people um, failing to understand uh, what he's going through. Um, and uh, un uneducated, so we've had to try to educate them in, in the way of trying to help Kurt at school. Unfortunately, where the disorder is not recognised as such, children may be unfairly corrected or disciplined over their tics. The characteristics of impulsivity and lack of focused attention when tics are bad can certainly compromise a child's ability to learn. Yeah, but when I was young, I used to have the arm tick as well. Be like eating at the dinner table, we have something, and you just go oh, like that and just fly everywhere. <laughs> yes. and be in the classroom and be drawing, you just chuck your pencil or something, just hit the teacher or something. Tourette syndrome itself does not affect intelligence, only performance. Some classroom strategies and modifications can be of tremendous help. He has an yes. integration aid in the classroom at school that he has funding from, from the education department to have someone help him in, in school. And um, he's just, Luke's just started high school, having a look. Yeah. And um, we've had a few meetings with the teachers um, and, and other people at learning support at the school and they've been really, really helpful in getting the, the things that he needs, <clears throat> the help that he needs in the classroom. He'll be getting um, a, a small keyboard to take notes. The teachers will be helping him take notes. You also have a timeout card, don't you? It, it's, a, it's a card that if, if he feels really stressed out or he's starting to get tired because he hasn't been sleeping well or anything like that, he can just go to the teacher and say, I need some time out. And he shows him the card and explains on the card that he has Tourette syndrome and he needs to have this time out. And then he just reports to um, either the deputy principal or the um, welfare teacher. Very severe ticks may be helped with drugs such as haloperidol, pimazide, risperidone or clonidine. Some Tourette symptoms respond to antidepressants or to stimulant medications. Treatment depends on which symptoms are causing the most difficulty. Some symptoms respond better to one drug than to another and some people respond better to one medication than another. Drugs are only useful in a minority of cases and there is a risk of side effects. Medication should be used at the lowest dose and for the shortest time under the supervision of an experienced doctor. Many people prefer to avoid all medication for this disorder. Can you tell who has the Tourette syndrome in this shot? No, you can't. People with this disorder are affected in many ways and not all are negative. They are often advantaged by the energy that is part of the condition. Many are musically or artistically benefited. People with Tourette syndrome who have a good acceptance and understanding of their disorder can manage their symptoms except in extreme cases and channel their energy into any profession or activity. There are Tourette syndrome surgeons, pilots, executives and sportsmen and women who do not let the symptoms run their lives. A positive attitude, understanding and acceptance can make all the difference. If a person suspects that he or she or a loved one may have Tourette syndrome, where can information and help be found? At this point, valuable information can be provided by the Tourette Syndrome Association of Australia. 
The Tourette Syndrome Association of Australia Incorporated is a voluntary and non-profit organisation consisting of people with Tourette Syndrome, their families, professionals and other interested and concerned individuals. The association disseminates educational materials in the fields of health care, education and welfare services. It provides telephone counselling, operates support groups and provides patient advocacy and other services to help families cope with problems that may occur with Tourette Syndrome. The association publishes a regular newsletter and continues to work towards seeking better treatment and improving the quality of life for people with Tourette Syndrome.